and then there's mud around the diamond. You try to go in, the first thing you're going to encounter is the mud. Because we have, you know, roughly 40, 50, 60,000 thoughts a day and the same old thing again and again and again. So I always do loops, right? Like four step loops, three step loops like that. Um, that's why retreats are good, where people go on meditation retreats because they're not in their usual environment. And make sure you don't have any kind of external thoughts and you will see amazing amazing experiences. Yay, many blessings and welcome to Spiritual Sense Advanced Podcast. This is a bonus session, bonus podcast for the discerning listener who would like to experience deep meditation. Deep meditation is different from regular standard fare meditation and it's something that really is only accessible to people who really want to go for it, go for it, because the, the depth, the, those kind of magical, mystical experiences, they can happen spontaneously occasionally but because of divine grace or whatever, right? But most of the time they come as a result of serious, hardcore practice where we really go for it put in the time put in the effort really to concentrate and then after that that certain amount of time and effort then something magical happens and that's what we're going to be talking about today how can you set it up so you can have extremely powerful meditation that does does miracles and wonders on your soul on your mind on your heart on your life so welcome welcome hello shireen hello michael how long have you been doing meditation for? 30 years. 30 years. Isn't that remarkable? And how many hours meditation have you done? I'm, I calculated, I think more, but I calculated about 20,000. 20,000 hours. I've probably done about 15,000-ish, so um, 25 years. So we have a lot of experience between us. And we both know, by the way, the difference between superficial meditation and deep meditation. Because I can't tell you from my heart that all the meditations I have are the most mind-blowing experiences of my life, because they're not. Um, recently, <laughs> since I've been here, I've been on a mission to try and have eight hours meditation a day. I would say I've been averaging about five and I've been feeling so good. I've been feeling so wonderful, so light, so happy. I've been wondering, I'm thinking, oh, this is just the best, the best, the best. <laughs> um, and, and so that's partly the reason I wanted to do this is because uh, I've experienced such a wonderful feeling myself doing it. And we, we wanted to share like what, what you can do. And also, I really feel, ironically, the more we go deep in meditation and go into these higher states, the more we will be successful in other areas of our life as well, because we are in a different place and we have better ideas and we have more energy. So I, I don't think this is like meditate or live your life. I think it can be both. But it is wonderful to like make time sometimes, special time for deeper practices. I want to share a couple of experiences. Yeah. Go ahead. This was about 20 years ago. And I decided I would do one particular meditation practice that we do, that I would do that practice 108 times during the day. And there were a few things I wanted done, right? Like there was some things going on in the center, uh, you know, uh, it, like we were in a very bad area. We were getting mugged. I almost got mugged. And, um, it, you know, lots of times uh, we got stolen, you know, things got stolen, like broken into and stolen and stuff. I, we weren't able to find a new center and uh, it was very hard. It was a very hard time in many levels, right? Because I was having some interpers interpersonal issues also. And so I decided that time, I, it's just the thought came, let me do this. It was not because I wanted any changes that I did this, just I just wanted to do extra meditation. So I started doing this pra particular practice 108 times the whole day. And would you believe it, within one week, we found a new center. That's incredible. And I have a couple of other times to very similar experiences. 
where like it's like really stuck right like like life was very stuck okay so after that one after i realized what happened with that one any time life got stuck i would do this and also other times but somehow things move right like things shift physically things shifts mentally things shift spiritually things shift it's true because we have you know roughly 40 50 60 thousand thoughts a day and the same old thing again and again and again so when you have meditation hardcore meditation you're changing that pattern that mental um repetition is kind of getting broken and something new is being poured in so it's like a radical change in consciousness absolutely Yeah, I mean, I can say more meditation I do the happier I feel, the more relaxed I am, the better everything is, the more energy I have. I mean, it's just the best ever. Like because it's our dharma, you know, our, our if we're spiritual people and we are on a mission to change consciousness, then we're living our our purpose at a higher level when we're in that consciousness more frequently during the day. So Shireen, one one thing that Shireen is exceptionally good at among other things she's good at is these <laughs> thank you. drills thank you right whenever i talk to when i talk to shireen like i'm like what are you up to and she's like oh i'm practicing this thing i'm practicing that thing um so she's always got uh, some practice she's doing and so the first thing we need to do if we want to have good meditation right let's just kind of like step back and here's the steps involved right so the first thing is to recognize that there's superficial meditation it's not bad it's just superficial it's just like the waves on the ocean right and that's fine you know you can play in the waves and it's it's better than nothing and it is has its benefit has its time we all like a bit of that that's fine right most meditation comes under that category and then there's deep meditation which is where you go deeper below the waves and that requires a much more serious approach You don't have to feel serious and heavy, but it's like it's hardcore, you know, like you're really going to like give it your all for a longer time. So you say I am going to really go for this and and it needs to be like 2 3 4 5 hours. I mean because my personal experience is this only after about 2 hours that I really get in the game. Do you know what I mean? If I'm doing right. half an hour meditation, it's fine. An hour is great. and you see I'm not saying you can't have powerful experiences in an hour but what I've personally noticed is as soon as you start getting 3 4 5 hours not necessarily in one shot but just over a day it something starts to shift on a deeper level so so you need to really like have a, the mind change that this is more so important to me I'm going to will, willing to put in at least 3 hours into it and then you need to think okay what's the practice i'm going to do we're going to talk about that in a minute shireen has tons of practices what is practice and the practice for it to work it, it really needs to be something that we love <laughs> that we feel good about and that is proven to work because if someone gives you a practice and you don't like it you're not going to do it are you realistically if someone said to me i i need to think that i'm a cat for 3 hours i'm like no <laughs> I I can't see the point in imagining I'm a cat for 3 hours so I'm not going to do it. Me thinking I'm a cat for 3 hours is a little ridiculous, but sometimes some practices are a little uncomfortable to begin with and you just have to plod through the uncomfortableness. Most of them will be uncomfortable at the beginning, uh, but the point is that like if you have um 100 potential practices that you could do that are all good. out of that 100 you want to pick the one that you like the most if they're all you know similar quality like in our meditation raja yoga meditation there's got to be at least a thousand practices if you add up all the different methods and out of all of them we probably all have like our top 20 that we really like the most they might all be hard to do but they're still like they touch our heart or they they resonate with us in some particular way so we'll talk about that in more detail in in a moment and then once you have a practice that you like even if it's hard then it's a matter of putting in the time and the energy into really going for it <laughs> um mm-hmm. and make it like um, your mission you know this is my mission this is what i'm doing and it it's not like oh this is an annoying thing i have to do what it really means is just that our consciousness is being raised up to higher states of of awareness and 
it's a very enjoyable thing. So it, it becomes a fun game, really. And then you have these amazing experiences that change your life in physical ways, mental ways. I mean, it's just incredible. So let's come back to the first thing, which is the practice. So Shireen, what are some examples of practices someone could be doing? Powerful practice. I could share a practice that really transformed, like every time, right? Every time I was stuck in something, something was going on, I did a practice and it really shifted. So this particular practice really shifted at work, something shifted at work. So I was a research faculty and I was having major issues uh, with my boss. I was having major issues with the students who were doing research for me. It was not getting done in a timely manner, and I was having major issues with deadlines. <laughs> I mean, you know, major issues, major yeah. issues everywhere, all around. So one day, it it came in our lesson that morning lesson, and I came to work that day, and I started uh, doing that practice. And the practice was uh, the. Om Shanti, I'm a soul. Om means I'm a soul and Shanti means I am peace. And so my original nature is peace. So when we say Om Shanti is we are reminding ourselves that I'm a soul and my original nature is peace. So there is a practice with three Om Shantis where, so Om Shanti has a few layers of meanings, like that's the first layer of meaning. I'm a soul, I, my original nature is peace. And so that was one, right? I'm a soul, my original nature is peace. The second is um, the supreme soul. I belong to the supreme soul, and the supreme soul is the ocean of peace. That's second Om Shanti. And then the third Om Shanti is I come f from home, our land, which is our home, our spiritual home, and that's the land of peace. And so mm -hmm. this one, I absolutely, I'm telling you, anything happens in your life, forget everything else. Don't try to analyze it, don't try to do this and this. You do this practice, right? One hour, two hours a day, and you will see how magnificent your life will shift. One, I am a soul, I am peace, separate from the body, I am peace. Two, I am connected to the Supreme Soul, I belong to the Supreme Soul, and the Supreme Soul is the ocean of peace. And three, the Supreme Soul and I come from our home, which is the land of peace. That's third. Hmm, that's beautiful. And uh, by the way, if anyone can hear weed whackers in the background, that's what it is. <laughs> There's always uh, challenges in, all, in an auspicious task. What can you do? Um, so that's a very powerful practice. That's a very powerful practice. So, so if someone wants to do this, they would, they would focus on I'm a soul, a spiritual being, separate from the body. That's a shift in consciousness right there. And I'm peace. Then can I, and I'm peace. No, first is I'm soul, I'm peace. I'm soul and I'm peace. And what's the second one? Supreme, I belong to the Supreme Soul and the Supreme Soul is the ocean of peace. That's so then you're going into that awareness of Supreme Soul. Supreme Soul is ocean of peace. If anyone's seen the ocean, you know how big the ocean is. So you can imagine what an ocean of peace would be like. And, and, and then, then the, the third, third one, one is both of us come from our home, which is the land of peace. So we're both up there in the home, in the land of peace. So he's ocean of peace in the land of peace and you're a being of peace. In the land of peace, connected with in the, the land ocean of peace. peace. Yeah, I mean, what can be better than that? <laughs> it's really magical practice, right? So magical. Like, you keep doing it, the more you do it, the deeper the experience and the more the magic, I promise you. You yeah. want changes in your life, you do this practice. You know, like, you know, like in yeah. Thanksgiving, like we have, yeah. um, what is that, uh, cranberry sauce. And I always just, because I didn't grow up with Thanksgiving, um, in India and I came here and I'm like why do we get cranberry sauce so someone told me oh cranberry sauce is cleanses your palate because there's so many different uh, f oh, feasts is that what it's for oh, <laughs> feasts is on the uh, on your plate yeah. so that you eat cranberry sauce it cleanses your palate and then you mm -hmm. can enjoy the next course or the next 
dish. Oh, right? I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah, so cranberries are very tart, aren't they? No, but the sauce is quite sweet. Um, but this one, it's like a sweet and sour sauce. Mm -hmm. So this particular meditation practice, like peace, 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 Om Shanti, three Om Shantis. Mm -hmm. This one is like a spiritual palate cleanser. Now I just, I do other practices and then I do this a couple of times and I do other practices like that. Ah, you know, these, see, the thing is, if, if you're fairly new to meditation and you're listening to this, you might not un quite understand what we're talking about here. But what happens is that you actually can experience these things very, very deeply and they become very vivid. So it kind of takes over your awareness. So instead of being caught up in all this stuff, your internal experience is very rich and very powerful and um, very obvious. It's not like this subtle thing over there. It's something really powerful that you're definitely experiencing. Um, it's a total state change. So, so um, how how do you do this over and over again, right? Because someone might be like, how like how long would it take to go through these three levels and then start again? So this is a like repetition, right? Yes, it's a loop. Um, we have something called spiritual drill, right? Like a physical drill. You say, put your arm this way, put your arm this way, right? Like mm -hmm. you have a repetition. Like you go this way, this way, come back, and then you go this yeah. way, this way, right? So this is a spiritual drill. Spiritual mm -hmm. drill means you're moving your consciousness in these rep repetitive um, uh, thought patterns, right? And right. so... Um, so you go, f so first you think of yourself as peace. I'm a soul, I'm peace, I'm light, I'm peace. Then mm -hmm. you remember the Supreme Soul, the ocean of peace, and that, this, that sense of belonging, that sense of closeness. And then see both you and the Supreme Soul very close in the soul world, in the land of peace. Then again, come back down and see yourself as a soul, as peace. Then again, mm -hmm. the super so it's a loop. Right. So how long would it take for each to do one loop? It depends on you. I would say do one loop a minimum of one minute. But so if it's you quite feel slow then. Yeah, it's slow, but if you feel you can't sustain a minute, right? It's important not to have other thoughts while you're doing the loop, right? If I think mm -hmm. I'm soul, I'm peace and then I'm thinking why did that person say that to me? then <laughs> I am interrupting the loop, right? right? And so I always go back to the beginning of the loop. So if you feel you're not able to do a loop for a minute without too many thoughts, then do the loop faster. Right. Keep doing the loop without any external thoughts, without any interruptions, and eventually you will be able to uh, make the loop one minute, two minute, like that. Exactly, yeah. So you start s faster because it's easier. If you could do things quickly, there's less less other thoughts happening at that time. Uh, and then you can slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And the, th the key thing is repetition. You do it again and again and again and again and again. And what happens is it, it goes from um, information and knowledge to profound shifts in consciousness so you feel radically different I mean so oftentimes I'm sitting down doing these practices and then I stand up and I'm like whoa this is really like it's like because I've done drugs in my life when I was younger right and it's like doing drugs actually because your your brain you're in a different state of consciousness it's not the same as drugs but like the the actual state that you're in when you go really deep is totally different because you get del delta waves the theta waves, um, it releases DMT. I mean, it's a really noticeable change in physiology as well as it is a spiritual experience. So it starts off all you know a bit superficial, and then it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, deeper. Um, and um, it, ha it has profound effects on our in our whole perception of reality. So hooray for that! So and it's. Anyone who has, because a lot of people have tried different drugs in their life, or they've tried medications or like whatever, and people get addicted to that stuff, right? Because it changes the state. Well, this med meditation is even more powerful than those things are. 
um, but it's completely natural and you don't have there's no side effects to it I mean actually no there can be side effects if you do too much meditation it can potentially have some side effects but we're not going to get into that well I, now that I've said it we probably have to talk about it actually do you want to talk about any potential side effects Shireen? <laughs> Any any danger of doing too much meditation? Um, I don't see any dangers really. What were you thinking? I was thinking that it's sometimes um, um, unearths some karmic accounts or um, some stuff that was lingering around. Now it can be released. You know, like the illness can be. Uh, like right. there's an expression, you know, when you take the medicine, the illness erupts. So sometimes, um, I, this used to freak me out when I was starting out, but now I'm like, just, I don't care. Like I have to go deep anyway, so it doesn't bother me as much. But like, you have to face yourself a bit more because you see the, con- I think what it is, is the contrast between... You do have to face the, yourself a bit more. Yeah, that's the side effect, is that when we're superficially living our life and just rah, 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 I'm doing me, 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 and I'm this body and, you know, just caught up in the world, that's one thing. But when we have a state change, then when we go back into the old thing we're used to, it seems a bit jarring. You know, and think I, of it this way, right? Like, let's say you're a beautiful diamond and then there's mud around the diamond and... Um, you try to go in the first thing you're going to encounter is the mud but you have to keep going in so keep facing keep facing because at one point you will come to the diamond so don't get distracted by the mud don't get um you know disheartened by the mud yeah there's normally there's a certain level because i I do quite a lot of meditation and um the, the more i really go for it my my notice i've noticed after two hours if i can manage to sit for two hours come the third hour it's just incredible but that, that's not an easy thing to do to sit in meditation for two hours it really isn't because there's so many other things i could be doing and the only way i can do it if i'm honest is the only way it works for me is i have to turn all my internet stuff off don't have my phone with me and go somewhere else where i've got nothing to do and then i can easily sit for a long period of time because there's no other options if i'm at my house and there's all these things going on and that people can show up and all these internet distractions and beeps and all the rest of it i'm going to hear all that and i'm going to be like oh oh, what's so so i think a part of it is if you want to go deep to um, give yourself an opportunity to be in a situation where it's where it's conducive to do that um, that's why retreats are good, where people go on meditation retreats, because they're not in their usual environment and they can just do the thing. There's a lot of noise in the background here. We love our weed whackers, don't we? Uh, I don't know if you probably can't hear it on. on <laughs> I but, can't uh, hear it on Zoom. No, you can't. But anyway, we, I'm just we're going to carry on anyway. But I'm apologising for the uh, the chorus in the background, the wonderful music of the the modern tools. Yeah. Okay. Another practice. Another practice. So. Um, we can just mute you out. <laughs> um, so another practice is, um, you know, we think I'm a soul, right? It seems like there's this feeling, oh, I know, I know I'm a soul, right? Like I tell some people and they say, yeah, of course I know I'm a soul. But am I really experiencing myself as a soul? Um, that's very important to understand. And then the next one is, we think, oh, I'm immortal, right? Like even in the Gita, it talks about being immortal and we know we are immortal souls. We, I hope we all know we are immortal. At least we know we are immortal. But now we have to experience immortality, you know, or we have to experience eternity, right? And so to be able to experience eternity or let's take immortality, let's take one experience because both are different experiences. Let's take immortality, right? Right. Um, I first have to really come into the awareness and really experience myself as a soul and then experience immortality. And again, immortality and soul is a repetition. You have to repeat, 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 and then you will experience. And you have to repeat, 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 repeat without external thoughts. The reason why we are not able to experience is we have too many thoughts while we are doing the repetition. 
And because there are too many thoughts while doing the repetition, too many other thoughts are going on, right? At one time I'm thinking I'm a soul, and then I'm thinking why why are they mowing the lawn at this time? And so all of this stuff is happening. So you have to be able to do this repetition without external thoughts. So one. So I always do loops, right? Like four-step loops, three-step loops like that. Um, the first step is um, you see yourself in this body right here, right? Like aware of yourself, like just see yourself, like spend time with yourself. I am here. I am a soul. I'm here. I'm a being of light. I'm a point of light. People might argue with us and say, oh, but why are we points of light? Why are we here? We are not here. Wherever, just you're a soul, right? You're light, you're a soul. The reason why we say we are here is um, because the soul is the central uh, function, like the brain and everything is here. The eyes are the windows to the soul. They're right here. So we are the driver. So we are right here, right? But if you want to think of yourself in the heart, go ahead. But you have to see yourself as non-physical. So because we have to see ourselves as non-physical, we see ourselves as points of light. And I can tell you, I don't want to get into a debate with anyone whether we are points of light, not points of light. But I can tell you one thing, for sure, 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 one thing is I have amazing experiences because I'm taking myself away from physical form. Because we are so attached to the physical form and the physical form really pulls us, pulls our mind, pulls our thing. So this gives us a focus. So see yourself as a soul right here, as a being of light. And just keep seeing yourself, right? Like you have to be, spend time with yourself as light. I am light, I'm here, I am in the center of the forehead, I'm peace, I'm right here, right? Spend time with yourself, that's the first step. The second step is then you tell yourself, then you talk to yourself, um, talk to yourself and say, I this soul, I this being of light, am neither born nor will I die. I will always live. I'm an immortal soul. There's no death to me. There's no birth to me. I'm an immortal soul. Right? Just these two steps. Keep seeing yourself. Keep spending time with yourself. And then going into, I'm an immortal soul. Nothing can destroy me. Right? So now when I'm in this practice of immortality, I visualize. I visualize, I say, okay, fire, I'm going into fire as a soul and fire is not burning me. I'm going into water as a soul, as a point of light and water is not making me wet. I'm, you know, I'm just this soul right here. I'm an immortal soul. Nothing can destroy me. I'm an immortal soul. So th just these two steps, right? Keep going from one step to the other step and take your time with either of the steps and make sure you don't have any kind of external thoughts and you will see amazing, amazing experiences. Mm. Yeah, it's really blissful, blissful experiences. I mean, I've been practicing various versions of this these last few days since I've been here. I've just come here on a trip for meditation to Hawaii. I used to live here for 10 years, so it's my neighborhood, really. Um, and um, w one main practice that I think is very important is to go, I'm here, and then I go beyond into the light, into the home and then come back. There's only two steps. That's extremely powerful because it it dis, it frees us from our attachment to all this stuff. And some people, they think, why are you leaving the body all the time? Aren't you disassociating, etc., etc.? No, it's not like that. You know, we're actually attached. We're like trapped in something. And it, we actually can enjoy life more when we come back 
this isn't about escaping this is about being liberated right and um, having freedom waking um, up from I find a nightmare waking up from a nightmare we're trapped in we're obsessed about some dream that isn't real right this completely caught up in this nightmare thing forgetting who we are and forgetting where we come from and who we belong to and what's going on so this is about awakening and then coming back um, with a higher state of awareness and then a reawakening and coming back awakening and returning otherwise we are stuck and if we're stuck then what good is that so so there's lots of practices um shireen has a long list of practices i mean i have a fairly long list I as well but she has <laughs> book of you practices book? you have a book of practices book so of if practices. anyone's interested in learning how or what these practices are it's soul fitness no, and is this a book is just one aspect right there's a 50 practices of just on the soul the, it's a great book do you have a copy of it you can wave it at the camera anywhere we can no find i don't a, i don't Anyway, she's too detached about that. Normally, people with podcasts have their book prominently in a place behind them, you know. But Shireen's like, oh, I don't know where it is. But um, but anyway, we can put a link to it. It's they're all very good, powerful practices that are easy to read and understand how they work. Um, so choose the practice that you like, whether it's one of these practices or something else, and then give yourself like hours to practice and think to yourself this is the most important thing in my day most important thing in my life everything else we can get done as well but this is priority and you'll find that you feel much better than normal <laughs> and you get better ideas and the other stuff somehow you manage to get it done as well so and, and realistically it's such a pleasure it's such a pleasure I, I can say from my heart that the greatest pleasure in my life is having higher states of consciousness through meditation and these practices. Yay! And you might find you manifest fun things as well, like I manifested all these wonderful mangoes that I have over there. The finest mangoes, I can't believe they exist, and I came across them because I was practicing meditation, 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 and I was driving around and I was like, oh my goodness, look at this. Mangoes, the best mangoes ever. So strange and wondrous things happen as well right all right okay. okay i'll pick a random page okay healing a powerful metamorphosis has embraced you restoring your peace and healing the scars you feel reborn whole again and utterly transformed into a joyous light being each day brings new hope and joy as you heal and grow. Hmm, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, thank you. It's a beautiful blessing. He meditation is very healing. Now, and also this whole idea of being born as something light mm -hmm. and joyous. Right, like if you think about a caterpillar, heavy, restricted moment, um, not many options. And then you do all these practices and you're reborn as this really light butterfly that has more options. You can fly more, you have more vistas you can go to. Yeah, you can go to the wonder of and, and uh, beautiful colors and everything. So, yeah, meditation, like we have to clarify, meditation is a, is a means to awakening the end result is we don't need to do meditation anymore because we're in a higher state of consciousness isn't that right that's the irony is the consequence of large amounts of meditation is that you reach a certain state where when in the future you don't actually do the practices but you're in the states which is quite interesting isn't it so it's all about an actual change in ourselves that's the end result yay so enjoy enjoy Wishing everyone great success in your practice, in your experience. Much love.